to encourage people to look around and find glimpses of God. That's just one goal. Author and producer Matt Williams had when writing his new book. And in the new book, Glimpses, readers are shown his take on life, love, and spiritual stuff. Having written, produced, or created several of the most successful comedies in television history, The Cosby Show, Roseanne, and Home Improvement, Matt Williams remains a guy who looks for the good in life. When he's not helping others hone their craft at Columbia University, Matt enjoys life on the farm with his beloved wife and many animals. Through his new book, Glimpses, Matt lets us into the pivotal, tender, and hilarious moments of his life, all while issuing a call for simple human kindness. Matt Williams is with us now to discuss his great book, Glimpses. Matt, welcome. Thank you. Glad you're here. Now, all this great success, worldly success, right? But I just got to say as a reader, it was a, at your expense, it was a lot of fun reading about you pounding the pavement in New York City <laughs> trying to land a gig. Yes. I mean, those were just some distressing days, right? You're an educated guy in, in, the, in the craft looking right. for work. You're optimistic or what, starting out? Well, you get beaten down. You get rejected, and, and, and especially if you're an actor because they're rejecting you, not your vacuum that you're trying to sell or your shoes. They're, they're rejecting you. So you really have to find a way to override that. And, and I, did, I did bottom out. I, I, I said some prayers and I went, okay, this is called show business. If it's business, I need to treat it like a business. And I kind of laid out a five-year plan. And I said, first thing I have to do is eat. So, <laughs> and I figured, well, I can do commercials. And so that, the commercials, because I had been trained as an actor, led to the soap opera the whole time I was writing. I were, was constantly writing. Were you initially aiming too high to land jobs? No, 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 no. I was trying to get, I was, I, I, would, I would have d done anything. <laughs> one, one interview, the woman said, would you be willing to dye your hair black? And I started to say, woman, I'll set my hair on fire to get yeah, this where job. Where is it right now? <laughs> yeah. I, and you did that gig, didn't I, I you? I did. I dyed that it was black. for what product was that? There was a hair pomade product, yes. uh, and they dyed it jet black, and they put me in this slinky shirt, and it was all in Spanish. I didn't understand a word they said, but I had to look in a mirror as, a, as this sultry woman came up and ran her fingers through my pomaded hair. Good gig. They probably <laughs> wouldn't cast it that way they now. They would not cast it that way now. It was ridiculous back then to do that. So after many months of these rejections, it starts to probably take toll on your soul a little bit and your esteem, yep. and what, did you have a moment with the Lord? What happened? I did. I kind of bottomed out, and I said a prayer, and uh, I, I did hear in my spirit voice, I will prosper you in ways you can't even imagine. And I, I did hesitate and said, I will prosper you in ways you can't even imagine. Had you been used to hearing voice, a voice like that? I, I did. From I write about it in the book. From the time I was five, yeah. I learned to trust my spirit voice. Some people call it intuition, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. I call it the spirit voice. And you can call it a gut reaction. But as from five years old on, I trusted that voice. And it always led me on the right path. Anytime I went against it, I usually got into trouble. But that word, I mean, your career far exceeded what you would have anticipated, even if that word had been true, right? right. I mean, the success was gargantuan. Well, I thing. really believe you co if you are spiritually connected, you co-create your life with God. And I sat down and in deep prayer and with a yellow pad, mapped out a five-year plan. I really did. I said, this is what I want to do. One of the things I actually wrote down was, I'm going to be the lead on a soap opera for three years. For three years, I specifically said that. I was on Another Life for three years, and I believe two weeks. And that was done here at CBN. At CBN. Many years ago. Many years. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Forty years ago. I, I, was a young, I, was, I was a young child. But God <laughs> used that time to prepare you for other things. Well, yeah. The whole time I was on the soap opera, I, I kept honing my writing because ultimately I knew I didn't want to be an actor. I wanted to write. I wanted to direct. I wanted to tell stories. That's my, my only true gift is telling stories. And I kept honing my craft and honing my craft. And the stories led to Cosby Show, A Different World, Home Improvement, Roseanne, some movie, a number of movies. So telling stories is my passion. And in this book, I was always inspired by Paul Newman, Newman's own. Yeah, I went, great stuff. look what he's done. 
and I don't make salad dressing. So I, I said, I can't make, I do make salad, it's not very good, but I make salad, I don't make salad, but my one gift is telling stories. And I said, how can I tell stories and be of service? And Andrew, at the front of the book, you probably saw it says, it's three words, love, create, serve. And I truly believe that's why we were all here on this earth, to love, love God, ourselves, our family, our friends, our country, the world, to create whatever it is you create, a TV show, cupcakes, a skyscraper, a book. And then how does what you create serve others? And the, uh, the prophets, all the prophets from this book will go to nonprofit organizations. My prophets will go to nonprofit organizations that help children in need because that's my passion, helping children. Awesome. Speaking of the book, was writing this in this form more challenging than writing for TV? No, it was liberating. It was. It was so liberating because in TV, you have the network, you have the studio, you have people noting you to death. And you're not, and also the TV I wrote had to be 22 and a half minutes long. It had to have a beginning, you know, a teaser, an act break. Sitting down and just allowing the unconscious or spirit to flow and just go, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to just let it come out. And then you walk away and you come back the next day and go, oh, that's what this is about. This is about my grandmother. Or, oh, this is about the time my dad delivered the lamb in the snowstorm. And I didn't censor. I didn't edit. I just allowed this flow. And then after it was written, I kind of went, Okay, what is it? Now let's put it together. And it became a memoir. We all have interesting families, to yeah. say the least. Your parents were unique, right? Oh, <laughs> to say the and, least. And your mom, you had very interesting discussions with that you chronicle in here. Yeah. Uh, so how did they shape who you, there's a line in here, I think you say something to the effect of it's, it's no wonder I wound up in Oh, but comedy. my mom, I, when I was very young, I would make my mom laugh. I'm talking five years old. And I remember my greatest joy in life was making her cry because she laughed so hard she'd get tears. And I Aww. would mime and, and, and I would do funny skits for her. And I said, it doesn't take a boatload of psychiatrists to figure out why I became a comedy writer, you know, but, uh, in making her laugh. But yes, my mom and dad, they went through a tumultuous divorce. It was some very dark days, but through it all, I loved them both dearly. And I realized as flawed as they were, they gave me what I needed to become a writer and an artist. At the height of your success, did yep. you, were you in your soul getting pulled to the things of the world, maybe away from who you were? I mean, that can be a very lucrative and... Well, what, the, the big, the big, I'm not a golfer, but the big sand trap hmm. is ego. Because when everyone's, tell, you've got two number one shows. You've created two number one shows. You've got a movie that was a number one movie. Everyone's telling you you're a genius. They're throwing money at you. And you, if you start believing that, and I did for a while, I went, mm -hmm. okay, stop. What's my purpose? I go back to those three words, love, create, serve. Am I creating, let me put it this way, Andrew. Everything I created that was inspired by love and guided by spirit succeeded. Anything that was inspired by competition and driven by ego failed. So I had to get back to the foundation of saying, why am I here? How can I be of service? What stories can I channel? And what came out of it was this mm. book. You're from where, Indiana? Southern Indiana, yes, Evansville. Many years in New York City. Many years in New York. Uh, and back and forth to LA for 20 years. My wife was determined to raise our children in New York City, so for 20 years I commuted back and forth. And then interesting, she was determined to raise them in New York City. A lot of families will say, I want to get out of this. Yeah. So are you more Indiana, New York, LA? Where do you, wh where's your soul? My like? soul is Indiana. <clears throat> I live in New York. <laughs> I go out to L.A. now to spoil my granddaughter. <laughs> I don't go out there for movies or TV just it's, to spoil my it's granddaughter. It's fascinating with this book, too, because after the career you've had, you, you had a moment with God where you said, before you wrote the book, what's my purpose? Yeah. One would think you had already found your purpose, right? And it was this career you had. But life's the things you chronicle in here, the moments with the Lord where you've seen God because you've seen, like, you came across this lantern. Can you tell us that story? when you Yeah. Came? One of the things I write about was I hate camping and we, I, because it's, the tent falls down on you. You have to stumble through the woods. It's to not go. Suppo I mean, maybe but, you're not putting it together. No. <laughs> but what, what 
with the camping was a lantern. I came out of that and I dug this lantern out of the, of the basement and I cleaned it with Windex and newspaper. And, and as I was cleaning it, I lit it and it worked. And I went, let your light so shine. Mm-hmm. Oh, let your light so shine. And then I started thinking, I, I read a lot of the early Christian mystics and Meister yeah. Eckhart talked about if God is the holy flame, then we're all sparks. And I thought the divine spark. And I thought, oh, let your light shine. And sin is anything that dirties the glass. So keep the glass clean. Let your light shine. Can I ask you a last question about the craft? Because you're teaching students. Yeah. How do you teach someone to write funny? You can't, can you? You cannot teach someone how to be funny. You can't. But you can teach them the craft. And that I can't teach you to be sensitive. I can't teach you to be funny. But if I teach you the craft, then you have the container to pour your art into it, your spirit into it. But you have, there's no art without craft. That can be taught. Are you still writing? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm starting my next book. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna talk about I it. I can tell you're not. Because you, if, you, if I talk about it, I won't write it. Is that where you write? We're seeing it on screen here. Uh, that that's where I write, absolutely. Uh, long hand on a yellow pad and then type it up. Are you the t- do you type it yourself? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. No staff for that. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I want to let you know the new book, Glimpses, is a fascinating read regarding faith and Matt's in- incredible career. And if you loved any of the shows he created or worked on, you'll really enjoy reading this. Matt, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Really appreciate it. We'll be back with more in just a moment. Stay with us.